God's law makes it very clear very quickly who we serve. God's law tells us this, you shall not lie. How many, how many of you out there have ever told a lie before? That would pretty much be everybody, right? What does that make you when you tell a lie? It makes you a liar, right? How many of you have ever taken something that doesn't belong to you? What, what does that make you? It makes you a, th a thief, right? How about this? God's law also says not to create unto yourself any graven image. And you know, you don't have to carve out a block of wood and bow down to it and worship it in order to be serving another God, to making a false God. You can make a God up in your mind. And you can say, well, my God doesn't care about drunkenness, or my God doesn't care about fornication, or my God doesn't care about homosexuality. You create a God in your mind that, that is comfortable with your personal sins. But folks, it's called idolatry. You're creating a God to suit yourself. And see, folks, the reality is, the reality is, is people are a slave to whoever they serve. What defines your life today, folks? Do you live for your next vacation? Do you live for your next uh, bigger, better house, your big bank account? Do you live for your next vacation? What is it that you live your life for today? Is it to come out to Virginia Beach and, and look at men or women in a way that you would not tell your grandmother? To look at a man or a woman with sexual desire, which Jesus said is adultery of the heart? Folks, the reality is, if you serve sin, you are a slave to sin. You're a slave to your sin. And folks, don't be deceived. Jesus put it this way. He said, you cannot serve two masters. You're going to love one and hate the other. And folks, if you're serving your sin, if you're serving your, your bottle, if you're getting drunk, if you're sleeping around, if you're, you're lying and stealing and rebelling against your parents, the reality is, is you're a slave to your sin. But see, folks, this is the amazing thing. That 2,000 years ago, that problem that we all have that nobody wants to admit they have, the problem of sin that has separated us from our Creator, that has separated us from God. Hmm. And see, folks, sin is no small thing in the eyes of God. The Bible tells us all liars will have their part in the lake of fire. No thief, no adulterer, no fornicator will have any part in the kingdom of God. You see, folks, that is, why, that is why Christ came. The Bible tells us that God is rich in mercy, not willing that any should perish, but that all would come to repentance. You see, like the slave that I was talking about earlier who, who threw herself at the man's feet, he bought her, and then set her free. That's the same way that mankind, if they will come to Christ, the same way that that woman threw herself at, at the man's feet, if they will humble themselves, if they will make themselves low, seeing their fault, seeing their error before their Creator. Folks, that's why Christ came. He came to buy us out of the debt. He who believes in the Son is not condemned, but he who believes not in the Son of God is condemned already. See this? God sent His Son, and it said this in the Bible. It said, it pleased the Father to crush His Son. How did He crush His Son? He was beaten, scourged, whipped. Pulled, his beard was pulled out. He was spat upon. He was mocked. They twisted a crown of thorns, and they nailed Him to the cross. And He died a brutal death. The death that you deserve for your crimes against God. You deserve the wrath of God because you've sinned against a holy God. How will you stand? God is holy, holy, holy. And He demands perfection on Judgment Day. If you're not perfect when you stand before God, when this life is over, God will cast you into hell. But God did something wonderful. He gave us His Son. It says this, that God has given us eternal life and that life is in His Son. That's eternal life. He who has the Son has life. He who has not the Son has not life. What are you trusting in when this life is over? Your good works? Your charity? And He died a very brutal death. And it says this, without the shedding of blood, there is no now, forgiveness. Now, before we die, and how can a man examine himself before he dies to see how he's going to fare on Judgment Day? Any ideas? Is there any kind of standard we can see how we're going to fare on this day of Judgment Day God will give each person? Well, He gave us a law. The Bible says the law came through Moses. He gave the Ten Commandments is a standard. It's like a mirror. We can look at the Ten Commandments and see how we're doing in our life in light of God's rule and God's judgment. He also gave us a conscience. You know, God created every man and woman. He gave us a conscience in our hearts, which is just like the Ten Commandments written on our heart, that we would know what's wrong, what's, what's right. So let's go through the few commandments. You can, you, know, you can give yourself. Now, I don't know anybody here because uh, I'm from Hampton, and, you, and you're probably not, maybe from out of town. So I can't judge anyone, but give yourself this little test today. Anybody here ever told a lie? 
you know, let me just ask you, first of all, is, is there anybody who would be willing to be honest with themselves tonight? You don't have to be honest with, honest with yourself. Has anybody here told a lie? Don't listen. Okay. And if I told you a lie, you'd call me a liar and I would deserve it. Because you only have to tell one lie to be a liar. How about this little test for yourself? Is there anyone here that ever taken something that didn't belong to you? No matter how small, or maybe like you called in sick at work, or you cheated on a test, or if you're adult, maybe you cheated on your income tax. You know, just you, you know, you just take things. You find something on the on the road, it doesn't belong. You take it anyway. That's called stealing. And God's law says, "Thou shalt not steal." All right? How about this? There's a, God has a law that says, "You shall not use His name. You shall not take His name in vain." You know, that's, that's like using the God who creates life, using His name as a cuss word. You know, if you get mad, somebody uh, in school makes you mad, and some, you know, God's name comes out of the cuss word. You know, and God, God gives it that real serious. In fact, the Bible says the person that uses God's name in vain, that he won't be found innocent by God. That's how serious it is that God considers. It's called blasphemy, what the Bible calls it. It's a serious offense against God. Like <laughs> Two thousand years ago, born of a virgin, Jesus Christ, God made flesh. The Bible says that he was tempted in every way, just like we are. That he was tempted in every way, but yet he sinned not. The Bible says he was morally perfect, that he was perfectly righteous before God his Father. Just like none of us are. But when the time came, out of love, Jesus Christ went to the cross and paid the fine that you and I can't pay for ourselves. Because we, we make ourselves guilty when we choose what's wrong, when we break God's law. There's a fine we have to pay, and we're not able to pay that fine. Remember, the wage of the sin is death. Because of our sins, someone had to die. Because we broke God's law, someone had to die. And that's what Jesus Christ did. That he gave up his life, that a sinner like me could be reconciled with a just and holy God. That a sinner like you could be reconciled with a just and holy God. Good evening, Virginia Beach. Let me ask you a little question. When do you think you're going to die. How long do you think you're going to live? To, to 40, make it to 50. If you think you might even make it to 60 or 70 if you haven't really done too much to your body in your life? Well, you very well may. I'm creeping up on 40 myself and I may have another 40 years. I may have only have another year. I don't know. But the reason I'm telling you that is because just this past week I got a phone call from uh, an old friend of mine who told me that a mutual friend of ours on Monday she was about up, she was in her upper 40s, still a little older than I am she, just, she died in a split second of a brain aneurysm she didn't see that coming her you teenage kids didn't, didn't see that get coming one, and her husband didn't see that coming you don't know when you're going to die get one guy. so it, it, um, it would be smart for you to figure out what happens after you die so you're prepared. Are you prepared? Well, there's a little test you can take to see if you're prepared for what happens after you die. Because personally, I always do better on a test if I know the answers. So if you knew the answers to the test ahead of time, wouldn't it be smart to do a little studying to make sure that you're gonna pass that test? So let's let's look at the Get test. One guy. And the answer the, the, the one, test is called the, the Ten Commandments. Fertilizer. The Ten Commandments that are right here on my right. Folks, let's look at a couple of them. See how you're going to do when you die. How about the uh, how about the Second Commandment? You shall not make an idol. Folks, you may think I don't worship any idols. Well, how much do you love that plasma screen TV everyone? Every one of us deserve hell. Every one of us deserves the lake of fire. First Corinthians 6, 9 through 10. Galatians 5, 19 to 21. Revelation 21, 6. Uh, 21, 8 says liars, thieves, adulterers, homosexuals, drunkards will not inherit the kingdom of God. That's just scare the hell out of you. That you want to repent and that you need to know that you need a savior and that you want God's love and mercy and grace. If you continue to live in your sin, if you continue to lie, if you continue to commit adultery, if you continue to look at porn, if you continue to live as a homosexual, you're throwing the wrath of God upon you. God said, unless you believe, Jesus said, unless you believe, he's dying and you will die in your sin. The problem is people are believing in their false gods, false ways. They even get deceived by false teachers like Joe Austin. 
deceived by Billy Graham, even the Catholic Church, the Pope is deceiving people because of false doctrine, because of your lack of knowledge. Your lack of knowledge will kill you. That's the problem. You got a bunch of dust on your Bible. You need to wipe the dust off your Bible and start to read it. You need to cry out with godly tears of repentance. Godly tears, sorrowful tears to bring you to your knees and that you know you need to repent and come to the love of God, the grace of God, for us you to die in your sins.